Welcome to another episode of Data Journeys. This is the place we come to to learn from data leaders who've experienced amazing growth, amazing momentum. Today, I have a special guest, Lucas from BCG. BCG stands for Boston Consulting Group. They work with hundreds of organizations to learn best practices. And today, Lucas is going to share best practices around data strategy and data governance with us. Lucas, welcome to this show. Tell us a little bit about yourself and who BCG is. Thank you very much. Andy, I'm from BCG. I'm partner and associate director there from Paris office. I'm working only on data analytics topics indeed, working with all my clients uh, to define their data strategy, to find the best use cases, and to put in place all the enablers, data governance, advanced analytics, uh, data science team, and uh, architecture in order to deploy these use cases at scale and to, to get great impact. That's excellent. So let's start and dive right in into data strategy. Why does a company need to have a data strategy to start with? Yeah, good question. So first, perhaps simply because without a good strategy, it's difficult to achieve an ambitious goals, right? So since 2016 at BCG, we, we are serving the market ambition and the ability to leverage data. We ask companies to assess themselves along seven key capabilities needed to conduct a data transformation. We have almost 600 companies in our survey covering all industries and, and all geographies. We performed already the survey twice in 2016 and 2019, and we are currently running the new version of it actually. And so we ask the companies to assess their data capabilities at the moment they take the survey and to express their ambition for the next three years. We are then able to compare the ambition they expressed at the beginning of the given period with what they actually achieved at the end. And we have also a good view on how they have corrected their ambition for the next period. So globally, companies are making progress in their effort to, to mature their data capabilities, but the transformation to, to data-driven organization is proving to be arduous for many of them, and it's not happening as rapidly as they would have hoped, actually. So while they initially hoped to raise their data maturity index score by more than 50% in 2019, they fell short of their ambition, improving their score by only a small 20%. And during that period, actually only 10% of companies reached their ambition. And we noticed that all of them have a strong and clear data strategy. And, and this one convinced by their success. So these data analytics leaders are continuing to invest even more, and they will continue to improve and most probably by, by 10% during the next period. So at the same time, of course, the risk for the others to widen the gap is, is real. I mean, developing and laggards company already need to make a jump of respectively of most 30 to 60% to stay close to the data champions. And these figures were assessed even before the COVID crisis. As I told you before, we, we are running the new survey, job of Q1 this, work, this year. The trends are similar, and actually it would be my pleasure, Bruno, to, to have another chat with you to, to share these results. Absolutely, that's really interesting. So you said only 10% of companies reach their data ambition you know what's happening there what are the common pitfalls that you're able to observe there are some common pitfalls indeed we we, we encounter regularly at our clients and actually many times they face many many of them i mean it can be because of an unclear value proposition or because only aiming at some incremental steps instead of considering a blank slate visioning it's often because of limited creativity around monetization opportunities, a kind of inability to identify the real advanced data sets and, and the related high impact business outcomes or use cases, as we are used to say. Not surprisingly, it can be also because of a lack of foundational uh, architecture, an absence of modularity that leads to a situation where the data is, is really stuck into the, the organizational uh, silos. Very often, they miss the implementation of an effective data governance to activate and to scale the, the business out outcomes. And last but not least, actually, we almost always notice a very limited adoption from top and lower uh, level employee. And actually, if you really want to scale your data initiatives impact, you need to manage the necessary changes in the ways of working, the ways of operating your business, and the ways of taking decisions. So we've talked a little bit about what gets in the way, the pitfalls. Now let's flip that to how do you successfully build a data strategy? What, what are the building blocks to building a successful data strategy? That's my 
my brother and daughter here, we believe at, at BCG that there are five key elements to, to building a robust data strategy. And while certain elements may need higher focus depending on the starting situation or, or, or the ambition, it's critical for the strategy to cover these five elements. So our data strategy approach starts with the clear articulation of the why and of the what. So the why, it's easy. It's the expression of a bold vision of the business outcomes you want to achieve and the selection of the value levers creating your sustainable and competitive advantage. So easy to say, but perhaps uh, more difficult to define. So the what is the identification, the sourcing and the monetization of the advantage data set creating that competitive advantage. So the advantage data set are these 20% of internal and external data sets that are making 80% uh, of, the, of the impact you are looking for. And actually over the last five years, a lot of attention has been given to analytics, AI, machine learning with companies across the board trying to build these capabilities. And as these are getting more widespread, the ability to gain competitive advantage only from algorithms and from basic data sets will diminish. So companies should really wake up to the fact that the data itself is the foundation to power everything else. So the true differentiation will stem from the ability to identify, build, acquire, and monetize advantage data set at critical mass. So with this why and that what clearly I articulated, the next step is of course to define the how. So we will speak here about all the enablers to be mastered to implement and deploy the data transformation at, at scale. So I've already stressed the importance to take care of the culture, the change management and things like that, at top management and on the workforce uh, level. Of course, you also need to reflect on what are the AI and advanced analytics capabilities required to generate the given insights and, and to deploy your use case solutions. So you also need to reflect on how to organize your data science teams, the way to let them collaborate with the business and, and with the IT teams to be efficient and agile and to have a good time to market. So when you're talking about business and IT, I, I know you, you place a premium on data governance and building a data and digital platform at the heart of the data strategy. I've read you write about that. Tell me more about what's uh, what's entailed here data governance and actually what we call data digital platforms are our key pillars concepts to build a, a data fabric or data factory that you need to put in place to industrialize uh, your data driven use cases actually without these two concepts no hope to get some impact at scale so no hope to reach big ambition with data and ai so let's start with data governance i mean when you have identified your advanced data sets you need to be able to integrate them to aggregate them, to manage their quality. So you, you need to govern your data. And actually it's well beyond administrative practices. It's about ensuring the right information to the right people at the right moment with the required level of quality. And actually to define theoretically, to be honest, it's easy. There are good books on that topic. So you even don't need to pay consultant for that. But how to define it in a way it fits your company governance your ways of working and to implement it in a way it creates tangible and sustainable impacts, that is much harder. And actually in the data capabilities maturity survey I mentioned before, more than 60% of the respondents rated their data governance capabilities at various levels of underdevelopment. Actually for many companies, data governance is the business equivalent of flossing. They know it's good for them, but they would rather do something or make maybe anything else. So while of course some good foundation are requested to start, the key for data governance implementation is a show don't tell approach. So please start to deploy very concretely your business driven data governance on the perimeter of your most valuable use cases, covering your advantage data sets to show, to really show that data quality matters. That is a key enabler to create the expected value. I mean, even data governance can be deployed via a use case driven approach, and it's a great way to bring the change into the organization. And I, I could speak about, about that for hours, but let me give you a word about what we call at BCG, the data and digital platform approach, the, the so-called DDP. So actually DDP starts from the strong conviction that technology does not need to be the, the bottleneck of your data and digital transformation. 
So you actually need to decouple the data and digital business transformation from the core IT transformation. Actually, to allow them to move at different speeds. I mean, to create new, new stuff, data and digital stuff fast, while getting time to upgrade the core system at the right pace. But to do that, you need another approach than the, the conventional IT one. I mean, with the conventional IT approach, it's based on large programs, taking many years for re-platforming, complex technology replacement. And we all know that it goes along with a lot of associated risk. So actually here, the key is to liberate the data. I mean, you have to unlock them from the silos where they sit into the legacy. So fundamental to this setup is a DDP reference architecture. So in a nutshell, in this architecture, you create a data layer to separate the data from the core transaction and system like ERP and CRM. You create more modular interfaces between systems. You adapt cloud infrastructure for speed and agility. And it also creates a digital content that is more adaptable so that you can evolve with new customer, supplier, or employee, employee needs. And then powered by AI and leveraging open source software, cloud services, DDP, then combine internal and external data in a new way, provide the data as a service to the omnichannel smart business layer. And this creates the speed to deliver new data and digital services to the front lines, we'd say every few weeks instead of every 12 to 18 months. And this is of course not easy, right? But if you do it, it pays off. When you achieve it, in our experience with our clients across industries, it allows to deliver twice the value for all of the price and twice faster than with a classical method. Lucas, thank you so much uh, for what you shared with us today. I learned about the show, don't tell. I learned about the data capability maturity survey. And then, of course, how to approach uh, data governance at scale. I hope people are going to follow you and read your research and reach out to you to get more insights. In fact, if they want to find out more, we've got all the links to your references down here. I hope you can follow this show as well. Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza.